Hello and welcome back to another video. This time I will show you my putter making process. This is a second part. Uh, this is how we digitalize our pattern. If you want to see how we create pattern, check out the video in the description. Today I'm going to use Affinity programs, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher, which are cheap alternative to Adobe Illustrator and InDesign. But if you got any other vector program, you might use it as well, like a Illustrator or PowerPoint. I'm only newbie in those programs as well, so I'm not going to use any fancy tools. Let's start from creating a file. I like my workspace large, that's why I always select A0 on the beginning, then I will show you how to cut it into smaller pieces. Right, let's start from creating simple shapes. Um, we're gonna uh, create back piece first. I'm gonna use the notes uh, which I done in previous video. So the back part is very simple and easy. We create three rectangulars and we modify their size on the side pattern, so the desirable shape. And then we use Add tool to join them all together, and then use a Node tool to remove unnecessary piece. Then create a name and attach it to the middle. Same way I do the front bit. If you look in here, mm, I usually put my work in the middle of a uh, workspace. It's easier to align everything to it. For me, the easiest way of designing stuff is uh, I do piece by piece. So when I got notes that we got from bit with the bottom part, we know we need to add the sides and the place where it's stitched all together with the back piece. It's like creating a pattern again uh, by stitching the pieces all together one by one. To have those pieces together we use Add To. So when you select all your shapes and they are together and you click that Add To they will join together and create one shape. Then you can remove the unwanted nodes by using a node to, to create the desirable shape. So the last shape we need to create in here, it's a flap. It's slightly different shape because we need to have a rounded corner. So what I do in here, uh, there is a special tool to round your corners on a shape. So I select both corners and then use corner tool to create 25 millimeters rounded corners. So this flap is more narrow at the bottom part. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create two triangles, place them in the corners and then use divide tool to remove them from a shape. To copy them, you just do a copy and paste command then spin them around with the mirror tool. If you like content so far, please hit the like button and share this video to help us uh, get more views. Thank you very much. And if you're interested in design and uh, making leather goods, hit the subscribe button. I add borders uh, so it, the shapes are uh, more visible. Then now it's time to create some stitching lines. I use pen tool. Uh, I select the beginning and the end with shift button pressed. So it gives me nice and straight line. Then I place it two and a half millimeters from the edge of the shape. Then I go to the settings and change a uh, line uh, into a dotted line. So flap I like to stitch in two places so it holds nice and tight. So I click copy and paste uh, the same uh, stitching line and then move it a little bit up and stretch it a little. And select both of them, copy and paste them. 
into the place where they needs to a uh, uh, flap needs to be stitched to which is top of the back part we will do loads of copy and pasting in here because um, that's the best way of ha having uh, same stitching lines on both parts for the vertical uh, stitching lines I like to place uh, some guides to create guide you just need to pull out on the ruler on the side panel and drag it out to the desirable place and now we're gonna create um, a vertical line stitching line which uh, we will attach front to it you can see uh, why I uh, use the guide in here because bottom part is quite easy to select where you want a line to start but the top bit you can't really see it on the other side we're just gonna grab a same line copy and paste it again uh, this vertical line in here the bottom one it's a bit too long and the top one is a bit too short we're gonna uh, stretch it out to the end of the bag So we stretch those lines uh, to the length they need to be. Then now we need to add last bit, the bottom line. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create it and then copy and paste it to the other side and flip it into place. Then uh, what I do usually I select two of those and copy it to the front bit and align it into place correctly and then co copy it again uh, flip it and fit it on the other side this video takes longer than I expected but never mind if you like this video please hit the like button or share it with someone uh, it will help us grow on YouTube and uh, encourage us to create more free stuff for you guys there's a couple little things we still need to create is uh, stitching lines which will go on the inside with the lines like this it's a bit harder to adjust them because i want them to be around two and a half millimeters from the edge so I need to do a little bit of math and adjust it to the edge of whole project. So if you look at it, you just press the control and you will see how far it is from the edge of a whole shape. You can't see it from the edge which you got it here. That's why I placed the guideline over there. But that doesn't seem to be working. It doesn't show you the uh how far is the distance from a guideline it shows you only how far is it from the edge of a project this needs to be fold and stitched together so i copy those ones and flip them and place them on the side so i can stitch it together obviously after i create uh, this pattern i try to create one thing from it to check it if I didn't make any mistakes that's why I'm gonna release this uh, pattern probably end of this month but by watching this video you probably can recreate this one yourself right now it's important but we're gonna mm, cut the pattern so it can fit into A4 and it can be printed by anyone so I create the shape which is size of an A4 now we're gonna try to um, cut the pieces in half so they can be printed out and put it together we don't need to do that with flap because obviously it fits on one page but the other parts you won't be able to so we've got our parts in the middle so I press 
the uh, A4 shape on top of the shape and then use the divide option to cut it all out. Obviously you won't cut the stitching lines but we're gonna do that in a minute. We copy it and paste it in, into a new file. Right now, stitching lines. We're gonna use something which is called the break curve. So select the line which you wanna cut. Use the node tool to select the point where you wanna break. And break the curve. And repeat the same process for all three stitching lines. Have a look on the right hand side. When you split the curve, it is split into two objects. So you can see it separate. So we split all the lines in the middle. Now we need to copy it into a new file. So s select uh, object selecting tool. Select all of them, copy them. You can see they disappear and paste them into a new file. Just make sure it's in the middle as well as the original file. You can see the guidelines snapping to the middle. I actually cut out those pieces uh, only to show you how it's done. But I'm gonna reverse all the changes into the original file. And I place here a little triangle like an arrow to show you where to align the pattern when you print it out and you want to st uh, stick it together. I save the file and we're getting on with the front part. This one's easier because we got only uh, two stitching lines to cut. So we are done with Affinity Designer. It's time to import the, those pieces into Affinity Publisher. It's way easier if you've got all the pieces uh, in separate files. So you've got all, all your A4 size page. With the front bit I done slightly different because I copy all together and paste it into new file. Obviously uh, something funny went with the background. I think because I didn't have background on the A4 size piece. So uh, I put a little bit of a background on it. You can see on my desktop I save all files separate. Now it's time to start the publisher. This one will be way quicker. I just create the file with five pages. I'm gonna add one page later on because I wanna uh, add some fitment to the pattern like belt keeper and uh, a cutout for belt end where the buckle goes. I'm not very advanced in those programs but basic things I can do. and. Um, the easiest way to import your bits are take it off the full screen, move it to the side and then uh, drag and drop all your necessary files into pages where they're supposed to be and central align them in the middle of the page. They A4 so they should perfectly align with what you have on your screen. Off screen actually I resize my uh, miniature um, to A4 size. So if you want the text to uh, change size with the file, uh, you need to convert it to the curves. You can find that in um, a layer tab. Now we create cover. I put a couple pictures of uh, sling bugs I made from this pattern. We're gonna add um, title and cover is pretty much ready to go. Actually, I made two sling bugs from this pattern. They both in different sizes. Uh, the pattern we do right now here is for the smaller one. 
if there will be enough interest, I probably will do a video, separate video, how I resize my patterns. After f I finish with this one, um, I import a couple bits and pieces uh, from the other patterns, like text and logos, and then uh, save. Actually, export this file as PDF file, so it's ready to print. Yeah, have a look how it end up. Thanks for watching, and hopefully see you soon.